this is Paula at the Barkman branch, and this is Paula's Picks at Barkman. Today I have a different types of stories. There is a poem called Over in the Meadow that's very popular. The first line goes, Over in the meadow, in the sand and the sun, lived an old mother turtle and her little turtle one. Dig, said the mother. I dig, said the one. And they dug all day in the sand in the sun. And it goes on two, three, four. Well, there are all many, many picture books that take this theme and write different ones. And that's what I'm gonna read for you today. And the first one is called Creature Count, a prehistoric count. And it is by Brenda Fuente and illustrated by Vincent Noyan. Creature Count. In the prehistoric meadow, in the early morning sun, lived a mother woolly mammoth and her little woolly one. Trumpet, said the mother. I trumpet, said the one. So they trumpet and they played in the early morning sun. There they are. <laughs> On a prehistoric mountain where the sky was so blue, lived a mom pterodon and her flying reptiles too. Soar, said the mother. We soar, said the two. So they soared through the air where the sky was so blue. Near a prehistoric beach by a foamy green sea lived a mother saber tooth and her toothy kittens three. Snarl, said the mother. We snarl, said the three. So they snarled and they hissed by the foamy green sea. By a prehistoric lake on a pebble-covered shore lived a mon velociraptor and her little raptors four. Hunt, said the mother. We hunt, said the four. So they hunted in a pack on the pebble-covered shore. In a prehistoric forest where the ferns and bushes thrived lived a mother stegosaur and her little armored five. Shake, said the mother. We shake, said the five. So they shook their bony tails where the ferns and bushes thrived. In a prehistoric valley by the rocks and the sticks lived a mother T-Rex and her terrible Rex's six. Boom, said the mother. We boom, said the six. So they boomed and they thundered by the rocks and the sticks. In a prehistoric wood where the trees reached to heaven lived a mom aptosaur and her little long neck seven. Stretch, said the mother. We stretch, said the seven. So they stretched as they nibbled on the trees that reached to heaven. In a prehistoric jungle where the plants grow straight lived a mother hadrosaur and her crested little eight said the mother. We hoot, said the eight. So they hooted and they honked where the plants grew so straight. Getting more and more near a prehistoric swamp by a long curling vine lived a mom triceratops and her frilly little nine. Munch, said the mother. We munch, said the nine. So they munched and they crunched the long curly vine. <laughs> In a prehistoric nursery, in her nest in a glen, lived a mother myosaur and her little hatchlings ten. Hatch, said the mother. We hatch, said the ten. So they hatched and they cuddled in the nest in the glen. In a prehistoric meadow, on a calm, quiet, balmy night, lived the mothers and their babies under stars that twinkled bright. Good night, said the mothers. The baby said, sleep tight, and they snuggled in the moonlight of a prehistoric night. <laughs> so that's one version with prehistoric creatures. And I want to read you a totally different version called Over in the Meadow at the Big Ballet. This was written by Lisa Schulman and illustrated by Sarah Massini. And I'm reading this with permission from Penguin Books. Over in the meadow, 
at the big ballet. Over in the meadow, where the dragonflies play, stepped a nervous little swan and her teacher, Miss Fay. On stage, asked the swan. That's right, said Miss Fay. So they started getting ready for next week's ballet. Early the next morning by the pond so blue, frisked a quick little squirrel and her fluffy tailed crew. Paint, said Miss Fay. We paint, said the crew. So they painted a great castle and the stage set grew. The nervous little swan practiced hard the next day. Then she rushed across the meadow after busy Miss Fay. I can't, said the swan. You can, said Miss Fay. So she danced even harder while her friends went to play. Underneath the oak trees where the dirt road bends, sewed a roly-poly hedgehog and her prickly hedgehog friends. Stitch, said Miss Fay. We stitch, said the friends. So they stitched and they snipped through the long wink end. The nervous little swan worried more each day as she tried to explain to the elegant Miss Fay. I'll trip, said the swan. You'll dance, said Miss Fay. But the swan wished she'd never ever heard of ballet. Under weeping willows by the pond in the grass, stretch a green speckled frog and the dancers in her class. Ben, said Miss Fay. We bend, said the class. So they bent and they stretched by the pond in the grass. The nervous little swan tried to hide from Miss Fay by the blackberry bushes where the wild roses sway. I'm sick, said the swan. You're fine, said Miss Fay. So they had a quick rehearsal before the big day. On the evening of the show, near a flat gray rock, dressed a plump white goose and the rest of her flock. Squeeze, said Miss Fay. We squeezed, said the flock. So they squeezed and they laced and they preened by the rock. The nervous little swan nearly fainted dead away as she quaked behind the curtains next to watchful Miss Fay. I'm scared, said the swan. So am I, said Miss Fay. Before the curtain rise, I always feel the same way. The startled little swan didn't know what to say. Did every other dancer also feel this way? The brave little swan watched the curtain slide away as she stepped toward the stage and away from Miss Fay. I'm ready, said the swan. I know, said Miss Fay. And they smiled at each other as the orchestra played. Under the stage lights in a cape of chiffon, spun the smiling little swan with her worries all gone. Leap, said Miss Fay. I leap, said the swan, and she felt like she was flying as the music played on. After the performance, as the dancers all bowed, clapped the swan's beaming parents with the rest of the crowd. Bravo, called the swans. Bravo, called the crowd. So they clapped and they cheered and they felt very proud. Over in the meadow where the fireflies play sat the tired little swan and her teacher, Miss Fay. Done, said the swan. Well done, said Miss Fay. And I hope you'll audition for our next big spring play. <laughs> so that's a very different one. I've never seen one like that. Let me read you another one that's in a construction site. It is called Push, Dig, Scoop. It is written by Rhonda Gowler Green and illustrated by Daniel Kirk. And I'm reading this with permission from Bloomsbury Publishing. Push, Dig, Scoop. 
and you'll hear the same rhythms again. Over by the dirt pile in the sizzling summer sun works a mama bulldozer with her little dozer one. Push, said the mama. I push, said the one. So they pushed, whoosh, whoosh, in the sizzling summer sun. There's a little one pushing. Over by the dirt pile, what a tough and burly crew, works a papa excavator and his excavators too. Dig, said the papa, we dig, said the two, so they dig schlump, schlump. What a tough and burly crew. Over by the dirt pile, just as mighty as can be, works a papa wheel loader with his little loaders three. Scoop, said the papa. We scoop, said the three. So they scooped, sloop, sloop, just as mighty as can be. Over by the dirt pile, tipping loads all set to pour, works a mama dump truck with her little dumpers four. Spill, said the mama. We spill, said the four. So they spilled, plum, plum. Now they are ready for some more. Over by the dirt pile, where big beams of steel arrive, works a papa pipe layer and his little pipers five. Lay, said the papa. We lay, said the five. So they lay, plunk, plunk, where big beams of steel arrive. Over by the dirt pile near a stack of brawny bricks works a mama cement mixer with her little mixer six. Spin, said the mama. We spin, said the six. So they spin, twirl, twirl, near a, near a stack of brawny bricks. Yeah. Over by the dirt pile, soaring skyward up to heaven, works a tall mama crane and her little crane seven. Lift, said the mama. We lift, said the seven. So they lift, swoop, swoop, soaring skyward into heaven. There they all are. It's hard to see all those with this big page. Over by the dirt pile near the wide construction gate works a strong papa grader with his little graders eight. Scrape, said the papa. We scrape, said the eight. So they scraped, scritch, scratch, near the wide construction gate. Over by the dirt pile, in a long and hefty line, works a papa asphalt paver and his little pavers nine. Glide, said the papa. We glide, said the nine. So they glide, ooze, ooze, in a long and hefty line. Over by the dirt pile, wearing such a toothy grin, works a mama steamroller and her little rollers ten. Mash, said the mama. We mash, say the ten. So they mashed, moosh, moosh, wearing such big toothy grins. Over by the dirt pile in the sinking summer sun, those trucks all give a shout, toot, toot, for the hard work, the day is done. Soon it's time to snooze. They scrubble up, then snuggle in. All listen to truck lullabies as lights blink, wink, and din. The moon glows cozy bright as they whisper, nighty night. Then they dream about tomorrow at the big construction site. Shh. <laughs> so that's a construction one. I've got one more. Excuse me a second. Thank you. And it's actually a Halloween one, but it's a great one. I love this one. It's called Little Goblin's Tent, and it's by Pamela Jane and illustrated by Jane Manning. And I am reading this with permission from Harper Collins Publishers. Little Goblin's Tim. Over in the forest where the trees hide the sun lived a big mommy monster and her little monster one. 
scare, said the mommy. I scare, say the one. So he scared and he scampered where the trees hide the sun. Over in the forest where spooks shout, boo, lived a pale daddy ghost and his little ghosties too. Haunt, cried the daddy. We haunt, cried the two. So they hid and they haunted where spooks shout, boo. Over in the forest, near a gnarled oak tree, lived an old mother zombie and her little zombies three. Stare, said the mother. We stare, said the three. So they stared all together near the gnarled oak tree. There they are staring. <laughs> Over in the forest, where the fierce winds roar, lived a gray father werewolf and his little wolfies four. Howl, said the father. We howl, said the four. So they howled and they growled where the fierce winds roar. Over in the forest where the shadows come alive lived an old mother mummy and her little mummies five. Moan, said the mother. We moan, said the five. So they moaned and they groaned where the shadows come alive. Over in the forest, in a hovel made of sticks, lived an old mother witch and her little witches six. Crackle, screeched the mother. We cackle, screeched the six. So they crowed and they cackled in the hovel made of sticks. Over in the forest, in a mossy green heaven, lived a scaly father dragon and his little dragons seven. Breathe, said the father. We breathe, said the seven. So they breathe flames of fire in the mossy green heaven. Over in the forest by the gar graveyard gate lived a bony father skeleton and his little skellies eight. Rattle, said the father. We rattle, said the eight. So they rattled and they ran by the graveyard gate. Over in the forest, near a tall, dark pine, lived a furry mother bat and her little batties nine. Swoop, cried the mother. We soup, swoop, cried the nine. So they swooped in the shadow near the tall, dark pine. Over in the forest, in a deep green glen, lived an old father goblin and his little goblins 10. Leap, said the father. We leap, said the 10. So they laughed and they leaped in the deep green glen. Over in the forest where the trees hide the sun, the big mommy called to her little monster one. Trick or treat, asked the mommy. Treat, cried the one. So they skipped off together for some Halloween fun. <laughs> so they even did a Halloween of this. Well, thank you for listening to the Over in the Meadow stories. And I do have a craft. It is turtles. Because the original one starts with turtles. So here's a turtle that I did. There's one that I did putting um, tissue paper, cut up tissue paper for a shell. Here's one that I painted the shell. That was a lot of fun to paint that. So what you need is a paper plate. That will be a shell. And then you just need construction paper or any other kind of paper. Or you can use like the foam, green foam or whatever color you want to use for your turtles. And then you need to have eyes. One turtle, I cut the eyes just from the construction paper. The other turtle, I did the Google eyes. So if you have Google eyes, you can do that. And you just want to take your construction paper, cut out like a head. I mean, if you want to draw it with pencil first, but it's actually easy just to cut like a roundish head. 
And then he needs to have back, back legs, which are a little longer. And then he needs his front ones, which are just very simple. And glue it. Do what you want, want to do with your shell. Put tissue on it, paint it, or leave it. And um, then glue underneath. You want to glue the head, the arms, the legs. Oh, and I did make a tail for one. I made a tail for one. I forgot about the tail. And it's just like a little triangle. But the other one I left tailless. Yeah. And, and, and then you can just make your turtle any way you want. And if you make several of them, you can stack the turtles. Have the mommy turtle and her little babies. So thank you so much for being listening to my stories. Try the craft out, and I'll see you next time.